69. So if I'm saying to my dad, Dad, stop this, realistically, what chance have I got? It's going to tell me, leave me alone, I'm having some fun. At the end of 1998, Diane announced that she was carrying Ramadan's child. I didn't judge it, but I was taken aback because he was an old man and she was a few years older than me. By 2004, his father's relationship with Diane appeared to be over. But the couple had had a child, and Diane was employed at Brookwood Cemetery as a secretary. Erkin begged his dad for reassurance. I said, Dad, make sure we know what we're doing. Make sure we've got instructions. Don't worry, I've made my will. Don't worry. I said, all right, I don't want to ask you anymore. I said, just make sure that we know what we're doing. But the day that Erkin was afraid of came much sooner than he expected. On the 2nd of November 2006, Ramadan Gune was found dead at his house in northern Cyprus. Stunned, Erkin flew out to be there. Got to the hospital, and we looked at him, and we know something was wrong. Um, his face was blue, a, a purple blue, and his tongue was hanging out like a slaughtered lamb. Um, it was, it was a shock, you know. It was, it was completely, totally devastating. Ramadan had suffered from heart disease, but when the results of the post mortem came in, Erkin wasn't satisfied. What they claimed was. He'd taken Viagra and uh, he had something to drink and he was having sex. And he died on the job. Which, you know, when you think about it, you think, OK, it's not a bad way to go. But that's not what happened. Erkin brought his father's body back to England for an independent autopsy to be carried out. As far as he was concerned, there were confusing and puzzling details about the death, and Erkin wanted answers. My dad never drank. This man is a Muslim. This man cannot take Viagra. This would be suicide. Ramadan's doctor later confirmed that Ramadan knew Viagra would kill him. The autopsy report said that Ramadan Gune had ethanol in his blood and needle puncture marks to the back of his hand. If he drunk the ethanol, it would also be clear from his urine sample. But at the post-mortem, that had been spilt. And we're in the middle of having a to try and organise another post-mortem because we're not satisfied. There is no suggestion that Diane Holliday, who was in England at the time, had any involvement in Ramadan's death. The investigation into his death is still continuing. Amidst the grief and confusion, the family had assumed that some things had been taken care of. We were in shock, you know, about what had happened. We just witnessed my dad being cut to pieces, the autopsy, so I wasn't even thinking about where the wheel is or, or, or what. But when the family began to search, no will was found. Certain that one existed, they advertised in law journals and local papers to see if anyone had drawn up Ramadan's last testament. But no one came forward and it seemed that Ramadan Gune had died in testit. An intestacy is when there is either no will or no valid will. And in those circumstances, it means that the estate of the deceased person goes to those people that the law says get it, rather than those people that the person who's died might have wanted to get it. In cases like this, someone, normally a family member, applies to administer the estate. To a minister of the state means effectively standing in the shoes of the person who's died. That's the easiest way to think about it. You gather in the assets, you pay their debts, uh, you pay any tax, you pay out any legacies, and finally you distribute the estate in the terms of the rules of intestacy. The family began the arduous task of applying to administer Ramadan's large and complex estate. At the same time, they continued to search for a will, and Erkin was trying to find out what caused his father's death. Amidst the chaos, Mel became wary of Diane's behaviour and concerned that she might benefit from the confusion. 
actually started to ask peculiar questions. Who's going to be the administrators? How many people are going to be the administrators? Why is it taking time to become the administrators? She was asking so many odd questions that I did say I wouldn't be surprised if she applies for this administration herself. And I was told, no, 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 she wouldn't do that. But when the family came to pay the inheritance tax, they discovered that someone had already lodged a caveat to block them administering the estate. That someone was Diane Holliday. Well, she nipped in not long after Ramadan had actually passed away, which when you think about it now is quite calculated. Without the family's knowledge, Diane Holliday had gathered all the information she needed and now, acting on behalf of her son, Ramadan's child, she successfully applied for the administration herself. The estate of millionaire Ramadan Gune was now under her control. No way on earth did we even expect that a judge could give anyone the authority to administer our estate without even consulting us, without even bringing us to court and saying, have you got any objections? Within months, Erkin Gune would get his day in court. But when it came, it was to answer the charge of soliciting to murder Diane Holliday. Following the puzzling death of Ramadan Gune in November 2006, the Gune family were now at war. Their opponent was Diane Holliday, who out of the confusion following his death had emerged as the administrator of Ramadan's estate. She and her lawyer were now firmly in the driving seat. It gives them the power to call in debts, to sell off assets, liquidate, obviously liquidate assets, close bank accounts and pull in the cash take loans out against the estate and obviously settle money to beneficiaries. Although she was legally entitled to do this, the family were dumbfounded and Erkin Gune was furious.